The Boeing 787 has performed exceptionally well globally, having carried over a billion passengers since its commercial launch in the year 2011. It is the fastest wide-body jet to reach this passenger milestone. With a fleet operating in more than 85 countries and logging over 30 million flight hours, its earlier variants 787-8 and 787-9 have been received in the aviation industry exceptionally well. Over 1,000 units delivered, keeping in view warm welcome of the earlier variants by aviation industry, Boeing 787-10 should have been a blockbuster, a long-range marvel redefining efficiency. Instead, it became the dreamliner that almost nobody wanted. American Airlines passed, Delta walked away, and yet United Airlines doubled down, filling their Newark to Chicago to Europe routes with a jet most competitors won't touch. Was this a stroke of genius or a dangerous overreach that could backfire spectacularly? Before we dive in, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to Aviator Vibes, and comment below what you think. Is United a visionary or just lucky? Your thoughts could be featured in our next video. To understand, we need to look at when Boeing launched the Dreamliner program in the early 2000s. Boeing launched the Dreamliner program with one bold promise. Build a family of aircraft that could replace basically everything airlines were flying at that time and completely revolutionize long-haul travel. The 787-8 was the first of its kind. About 250 passengers' capacity with 7,355 nautical miles of range built mostly from carbon fiber composites, offering unmatched fuel efficiency and allowing airlines to open new, previously unprofitable routes like Doha to Lisbon or London to Baltimore. It was an instant success. Then came the 787-9, slightly larger fuselage, almost the same incredible range, and quickly became the sweet spot for airlines worldwide. The 787-9 became the Goldilocks aircraft. Not too big, not too small, could fly anywhere. It now accounts for more than half of all Dreamliners ever built. Encouraged by this, Boeing decided to go even bigger. Airlines were still flying older wide bodies. So what if Boeing could build something that seated around 330 passengers while keeping Dreamliner efficiency? Hence, in the year 2013, unveiled the 787-10. Longer, roomier, and capable of seating around 330 passengers, it was meant to replace aging 777s and Airbus A330s with cutting-edge efficiency. But there was one fatal flaw. To stress to the aircraft, Boeing had to sacrifice one thing, range. With a maximum range of about 6,330 nautical miles with the full passenger load, the 787-10 fell short of expectations. In fact, it couldn't even match the range of aircraft Boeing built in the 1990s, like the 777-200ER, that meant routes like New York to Mumbai, having length 7,770 nautical miles, or Los Angeles to Tokyo having length 8,700 nautical miles, were out of reach. You would have to dump passengers, dump cargo, or make a fuel stop. This was not because of technology, but because physics refused to cooperate. All of those options destroy the economics that make you buy the aircraft in the first place. Meanwhile, Airbus saw Boeing's mistake and doubled down with the A350-900. Similar size, but capable of flying nearly 8,100 nautical miles. For most airlines, this became a no-brainer. Why would you buy an aircraft that can't reach major destinations when your competitor offers the same capacity with global reach? As a result, Boeing's biggest Dreamliner became its slowest seller, just around 435 orders compared to over 2,000 combined orders for the smaller 787 variants. That's disappointing for what was supposed to be a volume seller aircraft. Airlines want flexibility. They want aircraft that can adapt when routes change, when demand shifts, when the world throws curveballs. The 787-10 offers incredible efficiency, but only if you use it exactly how how Boeing intended. Step outside that narrow operational envelope, you're stuck with an expensive aircraft that can't reach where you need to go.
Delta opted for the A350's 8,000 nautical mile range to prioritize flexibility, proving airlines valued global reach over the 787-10's capacity driven efficiency for high density regional routes. American focused on 787-9s. A lot of European carriers mostly ignored the 787-10 entirely. Even Asian airlines, who typically love high-capacity aircraft, bought only small numbers. The message was clear. Efficiency isn't worth sacrificing flexibility. But while the rest of the world shrugged, United Airlines saw an opportunity hidden in plain sight. United's route map tells the story. Their transatlantic network from Newark and Chicago to Europe is dense, high traffic, and premium heavy. They're United's bread and butter, flown multiple times daily. Every one of those routes fits neatly inside the 787-10's range. More importantly, they're all packed with business travelers willing to pay premium fares for premium service. United realized something brilliant. United didn't need a jet that could fly to Asia. They needed one that could own the North Atlantic. By deploying the 787-10 on high-demand routes like Newark-London, Newark-Frankfurt, and Chicago-Paris, United could carry 330 passengers per flight. That's 15 to 20 percent more than the 787-9 while spending less per seat mile than almost any other wide body jet in the world. More passengers, lower costs, same luxurious cabin experience. And since the 787-10 shares the same cockpit, maintenance, and training systems as the 787-9, which the United was already flying in dozens, United could expand capacity without expanding complexity. That's huge competitive advantage and operational genius. United deployed the aircraft with precision, first on premium transcontinental routes, a business-heavy route where business passengers pay extra for lie-flat seats and premium service. Then came the transatlantic expansion. United started replacing aging 777-27767 on their core European routes. Same destinations but better aircraft, more seats, lower costs. United's 78710 Polaris cabins offer 44 lie-flat business seats competing directly with British Airways and Delta Airlines. The 787-10's extra capacity meant availability of more premium seats without compromising the passenger experience. United continues holding steady capacity on its 787-10 services to Europe. United also gained massive leverage with Boeing. When an airline's orders aircraft in the dozen, manufacturers offer better pricing, priority delivery, and special support packages. But every gamble has a downside. By committing so heavily to a mid-range aircraft, United is locked into a specific mission profile. But this brilliant strategy comes with risks that could backfire spectacularly. If global travel shifts Shifts, say more demand for longer routes to Asia or Africa, these aircraft can't follow. United would need different aircraft, breaking its carefully planned fleet commonality. Fuel volatility adds another risk. If oil prices drop significantly, the 787-10's efficiency advantage becomes less valuable. And with Boeing shelving its new mid-market airplane project, United has few options if the market changes course. There's no clear path if the 787-10's strategy doesn't work in longer run. These aren't theoretical risks. They're real financial risks hiding in United's fleet strategy. Still, the airline's bet seems to be paying off. For now, United has already replaced its older 777 200s on most core European routes with 787-10s. Passengers get a smoother ride, quieter cabin, and better fuel performance, while United keeps pocketing the profits. United isn't completely alone. Singapore Airlines operates 787-10s across Asia and Australia, Etihad Airways flies them to Europe, and ANA uses them domestically within Japan. Notice the pattern? Every successful 787-10 operator uses it on short or medium-haul high-density routes. Nobody is using it for ultra-long-haul missions because that's not what it was built for. The real irony is that Boeing built a jet few airlines actually needed. The 787-10's design 
airline perfectly fits a narrow slice of the global market. Airlines with many mid-range, premium-heavy routes. Most airlines don't operate that way. They want flexibility. Aircraft that can fly anywhere, anytime, without limits. Boeing bet big on efficiency, Airbus bet on versatility, and in the global sales race, Airbus clearly won. So, was United's decision brilliant or reckless? It's both. Brilliant because the 787-10 is delivering unbeatable seat mile economics on United's core routes today risky because the future rarely stays still in aviation. If global travel shifts or a new crisis hits, United's hyper-optimized fleet could become a cage rather than a weapon. But for now, United's 787-10s are doing exactly what they were meant to do, earning profits on perfectly filled flights, one efficient mile at a time. The 787-10's story reminds us of a timeless truth in aviation. Sometimes the best strategy isn't buying the most versatile aircraft. It's buying the one that fits you perfectly. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Aviator Vibes, and drop a comment below. Would you rather airlines choose efficiency or flexibility? We'll feature the best answers in our next episode. And as always, keep your eyes on the skies.